For nearly 70 years, the Chevrolet Corvette has been a performance icon among sports cars. The new C8 has been out for about a year now, and we are at the Florida International Rally in Motorsports Park to find out if it still holds the banner among Corvette performance. We're going to strap on our Stilo helmet, head out on track, and find out. You can feel a better car in here. It's, it's still, there are some things about it that are pretty spectacular, but there are also a few things about it that are a little underwhelming. Um, we'll, we'll start with the latter. I was, I was not impressed by the brakes. Now, this is the base package, but it still has like 12.6 inch rotors in the front, 13.6 inch rotors in the rear, uh, four piston, two piece, Brembo calipers up front, uh, four piston monoblocks in the back. It still has, by all accounts, a lot of brake, and it does produce good braking force eventually. There is there is an indirectness between your foot and the braking action, and there's also there's a there's a bit of a lag between initial brake application and maximum brake force. Now, I might be a little bit spoiled by the fact that I just got out of our time trial c5 with its you know massive six piston wheelwood calipers and, and big brakes and you've got you just punch that brake as hard as you can with with the ball of your foot and it starts slowing down right now this has you you feel brake initially there, there's no vagueness but there's this there's this lag between the time the car initially rolls in and the time it really kind of gives you it's maximum braking force. And like to the point where I flat out missed a couple of couple of uh, brake, brake markers a couple of times. I just, I just went right by and thinking, okay, I'll nail the brake here because that's, that, that's where I'm used to doing it. And there was, the, it, the, it's just this much longer period of, of from initial brake application to, to maximum brake force. And it, it feels like as much of a car balance thing as it does a brake balance thing. There, there is, there is a much better car hiding under this one, and it's probably the Z51. Probably a little bit more aggressive suspension tuning. Um, I think with a proper track alignment and some good track tires, this is going to be a, a, a really, really fun track car. It, it's, it's so effortless, and it, it's so effortless up to about 97%. And at, ni at this car at 97% is faster than most everything else out there. Those last 3%, a few strange things start happening. And I think a lot of that is attributable to all season tires, uh, street biased alignment, and um, you know, a, a, a lot of mass, it's a 3,400 odd, odd pound car. And um, just just the fact that it is, it is some, of the, some of the edges have been polished a little bit and um may maybe a little bit bit too much but uh, there is there is so much potential here for 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 the for the casual track attendee you're gonna pass every single thing out there for the super hardcore and time trialer you're going to find some things that you 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 want to fine tune in this to make it the ultimate track experience does this still still feel like a Corvette? Is is this a, a Corvette at heart? Uh, the the answer is mostly yes. It, it, so in in my mind, a Corvette doesn't necessarily need to be front engine, rear drive. To see, a, a Corvette is a car that constantly delivers world class performance at a fantastic value. That has always been the proposition of Corvette is less than a, a specific design proposition, more of a value proposition. And the fact that it could compete with some of the world's finest vehicles um, at, a, at a price and at an accessibility level that was far greater than, than those vehicles that it was, it was outperforming. And this car is, it absolutely fits that mold. Yes, it is. It is very much a, a Corvette at heart. It makes Corvette noises. It, it does Corvette stuff on track. Even down to the fact that off the showroom floor, it needs a little bit of work to perform at its 
at its at its fullest, but it is it is turned into a much more premium experience, um, much more sophisticated experience all around. I think. So that that's how I feel about the car after driving it on track. But my feelings, you know, are colored by by my experience. The data is going to tell the real story. So we're going to download our AEM data back at the shop, take a look at it, and see what the numbers are actually telling us this car is is doing. Okay, so here we are with the in-car video from the C8 at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park. We've got the video from GM's performance data recorder, which actually gives us quite a bit of information. We've got a G-circle over here, revs in the middle, steering angle over here, which is nice, brakes, which is the red trace here, and throttle, which is the green bar graph here. And to make things even better, I have put a graph of a speed graph from our AEM data system on here as well. Now, the first thing I want to look at is the exit to this first corner here. So this first corner, we'll play it in real time here, and we'll see that this is a long sweeping right-hander, and you can see that we are throttling all the way through this right-hander, uh, through and past the apex from the time we are we are here at this transitional area. Look at our speed graph here. I like this a lot. This shows that we are accelerating at a nice steady rate, even though we are cornering quite a bit over here. And uh, we can see our, our cornering graph here on, on the AEM and on the performance data recorder. Doing a lot of cornering and doing a lot of acceleration at once, I like the way it is coming off of that corner. After this, we have a little right and left flick and we can see that once we're in the middle of that we've just got a little bit of a pause with the throttle at the second apex but we are throttling out of this as well so in these particular corners the c8 is doing a great job at throttling out of corners and putting the power down which a mid-engine car is um is is very very good at so we're going to fast forward here to uh, a fun spot on the back of the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park, which is this bumpy area. We'll show it to you in real time. And there's a lot of curbs here. And I really like what the car is doing here. We'll back up a little bit and look at the AEM graph up here. Except for this little first curb hit, going over all those curbs, the magnetic shocks are doing a great job at attenuating those bumps. So I like the way it is going through there as well. Finally, let's take a look at our big sweeper. We'll watch it first in real time. Now, I call this a sweeper, but if you look, this uh, corner actually opens up a little bit with good road camber. Then the road falls away and the corner tightens up towards the exit. Then you're throttling out. So a lot of stuff going on in this corner. But one thing that I, uh, I don't particularly like about this is how long we have to wait to get on the throttle here. When that road camber goes away, Look at how steep this ramps up and look at how far we have to go into this corner before we get fully on the throttle here. We're almost to the end of this exit curbing. Got a little bit of an understeer push towards the exit of this corner, partially due to that road falling away. So while the car puts down power great and comes off a corner is great when the road's flat or the camber's in your favor, as soon as that camber starts to drop away, picks up a little bit of a push. Other than that, this absolutely was the fastest car we have yet tested on our test track. So kudos to the C8 for that. But there's a lot more potential here than even these lap times show because uh, we were giving up a little bit of exit speed to that understeer there. All right, that is what the data looks like, both from our AEM data system and Chevy's performance data recorder. Let's go back to the track and wrap things up. So if you read the internet, which let's be honest, you should never really do, you might hear a lot of people saying that a mid-engine Corvette is not a real Corvette. A Corvette has an engine in the front, it's got the rear wheels driven, it's got the people in the middle, and that's what defines a Corvette. Well, Zora Duntov apparently didn't have the internet. He was the father of the Corvette, and one of his dreams was a mid-engined Corvette. Now, I may not know as much as that dude, but he knew a lot about Corvettes, so I'm gonna tend to agree with him that maybe the definition of a Corvette isn't all about front engine, rear drive. Maybe the definition of a Corvette is about 
punching above your weight class is about being a world-class automobile at a much more accessible price and availability. Maybe that's the Corvette proposition after all. And if that is the proposition, then that is exactly what the C8 delivers. It is by all accounts and by all measure a world-class sports car. But at $82,000, give or take, for this fully loaded convertible, it comes in a lot less than Ferraris, McLarens, Porsches, all of the stuff that deserves to be mentioned in the same sentence with this performance and sophistication wise. And that is why the C8 is a true Corvette. It's a joy to drive on track. Sure, it's got a few little minor things that we would like to see improve, but those are all very easy to improve. And the real beast lies in there. Folks, if you like the stuff we are doing, check us out on the web at grassrootsmotorsports.com. Go right down there and hit that like and subscribe button too. We would appreciate that. I'm JG Pasterjack. Thanks for watching us here at Grassroots Motorsports. We will see you at the track. Support brands that support Grassroots Motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.